For the past two weeks, I've been chronically and horrendously addicted to Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and it has been the best time sink of my life since farming Bandos Armor in Old School RuneScape. It's a game with a ridiculous amount of depth, tons of characters to play, a pretty good story if you played the previous Grand Blue game, they're pretty decent if you never played it before, and seemingly endless co-op and solo content. And now that I've finally spent some time at the end of the game, I wanted to bring you guys some tips so that way you can stop griefing my f***ing co-op. With all that being said, my name is Raxophone, and here's five tips for brand new players of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. This game has an insane amount of stats to think about. All of the stats in this game will probably leave you more confused than Narmaya mains when you tell them there are other playable characters. But ultimately, certain things give you more valuable stats than others, and growth isn't quite equal. If you're struggling to beat certain missions, just know that your character level itself has very little to do with your stats early on in the game, especially in comparison to things like your masteries, weapon level, and sigils. Masteries are basically a skill and stat tree, and you want to progress them as much as you can. You'll be gated by story progression eventually, but when I tell you they make a world of difference for survivability and damage, I mean they're literally a game changer. And that doesn't just apply to early game, because by the end of the game you're gonna want all of these completely maxed. For reference, if you're super new, the offensive tree will give you attack, crit, and other helpful offensive stats, but the defense tree is gonna give you defensive stats in addition to things like perfect dodge, perfect block, and more potions on missions. Yes, those are tied to your stats and not a store. When I first started, I literally didn't use potions at all because I didn't want to have to buy more. Hey, I may be stupid, but... And on top of that, uncapping your weapon level is a massive step to gaining more combat power. If you check your mastery screen, you can actually see that there are masteries tied to the weapons that you've unlocked. And they're actually always active on your character, not just when you have the weapon equipped. So you'll end up uncapping and maxing them all anyways. Don't worry about wasting resources when you uncap a weapon on each of your party members, because you really are going to want them all by the end of the game. Lastly, if you want to add more damage to your characters early on, do your fate episodes at the quest counter, since those will unlock more more sigil slots for your characters, which will let you add just a little bit more in blanket stats overall. Actually, maybe a little bit more is an understatement. By the end of the game, this is kind of massive. And fun fact, you can actually check if you're capped out or maxed out on your sigil stats by pressing whatever this button is and reaching this screen. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. I am in a recording booth. Leveling up your character is a main progression point of the game, and it'll happen no matter what. But it's more important to progress all of these other points as well. So before you spam level up Narmaya like every other person that plays this game, remember that the low-level side missions don't matter as much as the higher level ones and you don't have to spam them in order to progress and level up. Just make sure that you invest in the right parts of your team, masteries, and weapons. One thing that I wish I knew going into Grand Blue that I found out later is that if you just wait to recruit characters with crew cards, they actually join you at a higher level. Now, I know I just said that level doesn't matter, but before you dislike, unfollow, unsubscribe, rage comment, reddit post, dox me and my family and put a gun to my head, hear me out. Unlocking characters at a higher level relieves you of farming as many mastery points. At level 60, characters already have quite a few masteries unlocked, and that means less mastery farming in the long run. This really saves you a lot of time, and it can ruin the experience for some people so you don't don't have to do it this way, but personally, I've always been the kind of person that wants to save the time on leveling characters if there's a ton of level because I want to play them all in endgame very fast. And another thing that's worth noting is that by unlocking other characters late, you can invest even more into Catalina because she's a queen and nobody else is around to distract you from the most important thing in the entire world. And the last reason you'd want to unlock characters late is if you're maining one or two characters and you want to get their highest level weapons from boss drops, you actually have a higher chance of getting the weapon you want with less available characters to play, which is super weird, but it makes sense. Since weapons in this game will only drop for characters that you actually have, it allows you to sort of manipulate RNG in a way and treat your best girl right. When I played through the game, I only unlocked my actual favorite characters, so that way later I would have an easier time farming and it has saved me a ton of time. Okay, so here's something that everyone I've told was actually surprised by. Whenever you use your Skybound Art, or Ultimate if you play literally any other game, it gives your teammate 10% energy towards their Skybound Arts. I see a lot of players waiting until everyone's at 100% to chain their SBAs and get a full burst but you just don't really need to do that. If one character has 100% and everyone else has 90%, everyone can chain. If somebody has 100%, another has 90%, and two people have 80%, you can chain SBAs due to everyone getting 10% from the first and second ones. If somebody has 100% and then the next person has 90%, and one person has 80%, and one person has 70%, and then another person has 60%, and one person has 50%, and then another person, I think you get the, you get the point now, probably. Do your best not to waste SBA gauge because it can make a big difference later on, and it's a good habit to get into. No, oh, and also, if you SBA after link time ends, you can quickly build up another link time. So, that's another thing to think about. So, here's a fun fact. Dodging kinda sucks! 
Well, it's not that dodging sucks per se, but it's just that guarding is kind of insanely broken in this game. If you're a Soulsborne person or just someone that plays other open world games, you're probably used to dodging. Or maybe you're actually just a parry chat and none of this applies to you. In Grand Blissy Fantasy, if you block, you can't get hit by anything except giant lasers. A majority of non-magic damage can be blocked. Icicles, not really an issue. Colossal Green Hurricane of Death? Yeah, not really a problem. Sonic the Hedgehog? Nah, you're, you're gonna be good, dude. You're, you're fine. If you're in a tough spot most of the time, a guard can stop it without you having to make yourself vulnerable. Now, of course, there is a limit to this, but nobody knows exactly what the f*** it is, so go nuts, I guess. Guarding is usually underrated in games, and I can tell you as a matter of fact that it is one of the most powerful utilities at your disposal in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. So try to get in the habit of using it instead of dodge spamming, like I do. I, I have a really bad habit of that, and I need to stop. The last tip I have for you guys is one that's good for both solo and co-op play, and it's absolutely a game changer. If you spam buttons when you're down, you can actually self-revive faster. And you would not believe how many players in co-op sit completely still when they're down and drain the defeat gauge. It makes it so much harder to beat content if friendly players go down and don't actively try to get up. So please use this newfound knowledge and share it with everyone, because if I lose one more quest to someone not pressing anything, I'm gonna get in the bathtub with a toaster. Thanks for watching.